Well, hello to everybody. Welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. A bit of a coincidence last weekend. I posted a video on using my form relief grinding attachment from Royal Oak. And four hours later, Steve Summers does exactly the same thing. A very obscure grinding attachment and two guys posting the same video within four hours. Just unbelievable coincidence. So in view of that, I'm going to take it a little bit further this weekend. Steve's grinder is either an earlier or later model than mine, I don't know which it is, but his centre extension, similar to this, is built up on a square bar that fits into a V-block. This is mine, it's on two rods with the extension centre. I'll show you that setup on the grinder later on. Uh, a few other little items to show you. One will be the magic clamp I bought for my camera and lights. Uh, it's holding the fill light at the moment. It just makes filming so easy. But something all of you have been waiting for all of your life. Drawings and instructions on making the tool and cutter grinder form relief attachment at home from simple materials. Now, this was published in the Model Engineer Workshop magazine for this month. I fell across it just by accident. It was mentioned on one of the websites. So I went online, paid the $8.99 I think it was, and you're able to view the magazine as a flip book, which I found very convenient to do, and that's what I'll be producing in the future. But also you can download the pages and print them. And full set of drawings, build instructions, very good. I'll bring you in later on and have a close-up of it. Uh, it's the best $9 I've ever spent, although I've got the attachments already. Every little bit of information you can get like this gives you a little bit of a different tilt on how to do the job and explains uh, more in depth. I'll also uh, give you a look at some pages out of the Royal Oak Manual which will explain setting up the cutting tools a little bit better. It's a very in-depth manual with lots of uh, graphs and charts on drop percentages and number of thou per tooth etc. I don't use a heck of a lot of that but the setup sheets are very very important. Okay we'll move along. Next I'll swing you around and you can have a look at the magic map. Okay, I'm now behind the camera, which I'll move back a little bit. In centre stage is the little gadget I paid about $9 for. Beautiful little clamp that just goes around to the arm of the magnetic indicator base there, holds the fill light. Clamping handle is at the back, there's the jaws onto the bar full ball swivel and it comes with a quarter UNC thread so it suits cameras and lights etc. They have longer versions you can get about an 18 inch arm on it. Um, Digi Direct is the supplier and I'm going to be getting a few more and I think I've come across a camera stand, studio camera stand so I can actually get the tripod out of the bloody way and me in there a little bit closer which is what I want. So I'll set up the centre on the uh, Form relief attachment and give you a look at it up and running. And there's the extended centre mounted up on the Royal Oak form relief grinding attachment. Uh, I can't get in there and point very well because I'll be in the way of the uh, IKEA Wonderlight that's lying it up, but it, it gives you between centres, and that's the centre carrier at the back, probably about 11 or 12 inches. There's a groove in the shaft just there. I can't get it all the way into the body. It hasn't been used for many, many years and even with a little spray of fairy piss it just wouldn't go any further in so I'll have to clean out the body. But it allows you to spin big taps or anything with a centre in the end, a reamer I suppose, uh, up to about 10 or 12 inches long. Now I did find that you can't use it with the chuck and I'll swing you around to the chuck. That's it there. The chuck's mounted on a 5C, or sorry not 5C, a Royal Oak. I think it's a 4C. It's a weird O taper. I thought it was 5C at first, but you can't interchange it. But the chuck is too big a diameter to allow you to use the attachment. But that increases the usability. Back in the day, uh, this is the high-tech grinding machine. This and the Cincinnati Mono Set and Pratt Whitney had another grinder as well. Uh, absolutely wonderful machines. They made all the form relief cutters, hydraulic ports, uh, aircraft engine parts. And you can see the adjustability for this I'll just have to get my 
finger in, or a bit of tube here to keep me a little bit away. That base swivels on this base. There's a swivel point there as well, and all the um, adjustments are graduated. And this base moves both actually and radially. So the amount of adjustment there is absolutely huge. And on this tool and cutter grinder, you can tilt and angle the head as you can with the later Cincinnati 2s or the mono set. So you end up with about seven axes of movement. Not that you can use them all, but it allows you to position the uh, tool that's being ground accurately and easily to either grind up to a stop or, as I call it, to pass through over the cutting edge, which is the way I prefer grinding up to a stop. I use only for things like annual cutters where you've got to get in behind a tooth and you can't afford to hit the tooth behind, which I have done occasionally and wrecked. But that's uh, the opposite of what Steve has. I don't know whether mine is earlier or later, but it is definitely a different demon. Quite a, a long learning curve to get to use this attachment and the book which I'll show next on the table, oh, it's sometimes as clear as mud. It's got a lot of mathematics and tables in there that it doesn't need. Uh, and I think probably half an hour with a good tradesman would be worth 10 manuals if you've been shown how to use it. But a good sturdy piece of kit. Okay, I'll get the book onto the table and we'll have a look there. Okay, this is inside the guts of the Royal Oak Tool and Cut Grinder Attachment Manual. And I've been talking several times now on previous videos about getting the leading and trailing edge of the flute at normal or 90 degrees to the table. And this is what I was talking about. You can see the simple twist drill flute there. And you do this at the edge being ground, not halfway along the flute. That's a twist drill, setting it up normal. That's a three flute tap, setting it up normal. And there's a four flute tap. Very, very easy to do. And now that you've seen what I'm doing. Okay, we'll go further on into the pages. And this is setting the ratio lever. It names off which position first, second, third, fourth and fifth. It gives the body diameter for the position and a suggestion. One inch and larger in position five. I've never had to go that far. I think the sufficient clearance goes on using the third position. But it says here that if there isn't sufficient clearance ground behind the cutting, it's to go to the next step up. And that way it's pushing further on the top. And that's all there is in setting procedures. The rest of the manual is a little bit of an overview and lots of charts with clearances and drop angles uh, that you do need to know. But these are the secrets. Setting up those uh, front and rear or forward and backward edges of the cutting tool perpendicular to the table and setting that ratio lever up. Uh, there is also a latch that you can drop in to stop the um, axial movement and have radial relief only. And I think that would be on some taps, but I've never had to do that. The taps always come out sharp on my other attachment. And surprisingly, the old attachment is radial relief only. Okay, we'll get on to the exciting part, the drawings. As I said earlier, this is probably the best money that I've ever spent. Uh, the instructions are very explicit. The author gives a little bit of a description on clearance angles required on taps. A few diagrams such as this. A description of the attachment, uh, various parts. And it looks reasonably easy to build. And uh, I would personally use a ER32 collar chuck with a 25mm shank from MG Productions down in Melbourne. Shank and collars will probably cost you about $130. And that's three quarters of the build done. It also is very useful elsewhere. I use one in my Clarkson tool and cutter grinder workhead. Uh, I find everything that they sell although it's Chinese, uh, it's of reasonable quality and very accurate. So you can get good products cheap out of China. A bit more information about actually using the attachment. Dimensions. I find the drawings to be good enough to build one. You could use a little bit of imagination, but I don't think it's 
uh, all that hard, uh, where he uses socketed cap screws around the indexing collar, uh, I would use socketed cap screws with little ball bearings underneath. I think they would give it a little bit more oomph. He uses a flat cam plate, which is similar to what I showed a long while ago on a video on a Clarkson head, although my effort was very rudimentary. Uh, machinists could have picked it up from that. Now, this isn't quite as good as a proper cam, but I would say it's 95% as good. And if you're not really stressing the tools, it's good enough to get the job done. Parts list and a few more bits of drawings. Bit of theory about the item. So worth every cent paid for it. No, I'm not going to photocopy it and email it to you or whatever. Pay the bloody nine dollars. Don't be so mean. But that is enough information to get you sharpening taps at home, counter sinks. Uh, what else would be form relieved? Uh, you could use it on step drills and end mills if you want to grind in that fashion. I prefer to use a an uh, indexed head. Anyway, that's all for now. Please like and subscribe and hope to get this up this afternoon. Bye now.